ever wondered which of the Babalat tour level rackets was best? Well, wonder no more. Could it be the brand new Pure Strike 97? It may be. Could it be the Pure Drive 98? Maybe. <laughs> Could it be the Pure Aero 98? Quite possibly. Let's find out. So to put these rackets through their paces, we have strung them all up with the same strings. There can be no favoritism. Yeah, we have RPM blast at 50 pounds in every single racket. Including this new Peugeot 97. Now, people are gonna be already commenting, I reckon, saying that's not what the PS Strike 97 looks like, and you would be right. This is a teaser version. This is what we get sent out before the official cosmetic uh, is allowed to be released. So we're sent this to test it before, but we do have the new color. So you can see here, the official cosmetic is, as I'm sure you may have seen by now, the shimmery silver and orange colorways, which we don't necessarily need to get to, but as we always do, if there is a tie between two rackets, the cosmetics will matter and look. Um, let's hope we don't get there because <laughs> I don't really like any of them. Um, <laughs> but there we go. Through this video, we're gonna play some points. We're gonna do some basket feeding, some drills, really put the rackets through their paces and see when it comes to the power, spin, control and accuracy and then feel um, how they perform and which ones rank up better than others yep. and therefore which sorts of players would wanna use them. Yeah, this is, this is gonna be thorough, this one, isn't it? They're always thorough. Very thorough. Very thorough. So we have just got back uh, from playing on court, putting the Pure Strike, Pure Aero, and Pure Drive 98 slash 97 for the PSO before you correct me in the comments uh, through their paces. And overall, I really enjoyed myself. Yeah, it's what's really interesting because we did try, we tested these rackets originally last year, and we weren't huge fans. But the more we played with them, like they all felt better. I felt yes, like all three were, were nice rackets. Before we get into the details. Overall, I was, it was a pleasurable experience with all three. Yeah. Ooh, maybe that was just you. Excellent. Maybe, it was just maybe. You. maybe. Yeah. Um, but yes, very good quality. Yeah. They yeah, felt yeah. there was a, a feeling of, of quality, of um, precision, of like good, good engineering, well put together. Yes. And, and also very different. Yeah. So it's obviously, obviously, most people watching our channel will be kind of tennis aficionados and will understand that rackets are all different and do play different, but there may also be some people going, are they really that much of a difference? Yeah, and, and the other thing as well is we get a lot of people coming in the shop who, th who think that brands are consistent. Yeah, this is also very common, oh, Babolat rackets are too stiff for me, or Wilson rackets are too this for me. Yeah. I, mean, I tried one, I borrowed a friend's once and now I hate all Yonex. It's, like, it's crazy because all the brands make yeah. varying models within yes, their and, ranges. And one thing that I particularly like about Babolat is they are very, very obvious. This is a spin racket, this is a power racket, and this is a precision racket. Thank so there we go, review done. <laughs> that's it, thank you very much, we'll see you next time. So, and that's the interesting point, because that's what they're all designed for. So that's what they are, when you're playing with them, if you play with spin, play with power, play with control and accuracy, then these rackets should emphasize that aspect. Yes. And if you play in one of those particular styles, you should enjoy that particular racket more. And what we were interested in finding out, I was, was well, which one comes second on the other categories? Which ones are closer? Is there any surprises across, across yeah, and, the range? And I think, again, when you do create rackets that sort of sit very specifically in a certain category, are they usable for people who don't play in that particular style? Do, uh, is there like an all-rounder Babolat racket? Well, there's also the theory of, oh, I can't generate power, so I should use a power racket. Yes. So the opposite, oh, I struggle to generate toss, I should use a racket that helps me. Mm. 
spin less so because you actually have to do the work. Yeah. Um, so there you have it. All the people that listen to us like we're a podcast because we sound the same, they won't know who's talking. Do we sound that similar? Apparently. Oh, okay. Right. We are brothers and one person actually said, are you the same person? We're not. I'm the slimmer one according to the YouTube The comments. slimmer white guy. The slimmer white guy. This That's this guy. <laughs> Thanks for slimmer, because that def <laughs> implies I'm slim. Yeah. I haven't been slim since 1999. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we've gone off tangent slightly. <laughs> Getting into it, into our categories. My favorite bit, power. Well, yes, the Pure Drive is the most powerful. It's it the is the stiffest, most powerful. Um, but the Pure Aero, not that far behind. No, and that was a surprise. It's the Pure Drive is designed to be a powerful racket. The Pure Aero, not so much, but it was. It, it did, it had a lot of power in it. It's still a fairly stiff frame. I think also it's quite manoeuvrable. Yes. So you can get yeah. that racket speed and therefore some power into it. It's got an open string bed. It's gonna help generate a bit of power as well. When it comes to the new Pure Strike 97, which obviously this is the new edition, so we obviously played with the Pure Drive and Pure Aero more, so we had a bit of a back story, a bit yes. of a deep understanding of it. Pure Strike was obviously new. And on power, it leaves a little bit to be desired. <laughs> yeah, it does. But it's still, like, it, you, I always it's one of those rackets you just wanted more. Like, yeah. it just wanted more. It just felt like it didn't. It, this is purely personal experiences, but you have an expectation of outcome. Mm. Like, when I swing the racket this much, this fast, this long, I expect the ball to go at that. And it always felt less with the, with the pure stroke. It was never as much as I thought it was going to be. Which isn't necessarily a knock against the racket, it's just something to have to recalibrate and rethink. So on power, it is Pure Drive 98 number one, closely followed, because this is the important bit, by the Pure Aero 98, and then somewhat lagging behind the Pure Strike 97. Spin! Was this a tricky decision? Not at all. Pure Aero 98. It is a spin monster. Now this was the big surprise to me, because I've used the Pure Drive 300 grams quite a lot, and I find it quite easy to access spin. Yeah. When it came to the 98 version, Struggled to generate spin so much with the Pure Drive, it yeah. felt better playing flatter. Yes. But interestingly, with the new Pure Strike, could generate lots of spin. Yeah, very spinny for a racket that isn't meant to be. Like, again, what I was saying about the, the power is you, you get less power than you think you're going to get, but you get way more spin than you think you're going to get. I think its maneuverability, its ability to generate racket speed with it, helps in the yeah. spin potential. Yeah, again, I think it kind of makes sense based on the way we play. So like, I generate a lot of my spin fairly wristy, fairly late in the swing. So the maneuverability of the Pure Strike certainly helped. The lack of maneuverability and the stiffness of the Pure Drive yeah. is really gonna hurt. But I, think, I think also the style of play that would use a Pure Control, I oh, sorry, Pure Control, the Pure Strike's previous name, uh, the Pure Strike, is if you have a longer swing, if you take a long swing into the ball all the time, you're generally going to play in that kind of more modern style. Yeah. You're going to generate more spin in any way, yes. and this certainly is not going to prevent you from no, doing that, which is why it's a, a closer second than we thought than yeah. the Pure Aero. So we're saying Pure Aero number one for spin, then the Pure Strike, and then a long way behind. Not a long way behind, but behind. Yeah, Pure Drive. Don't talk badly about my Pure Drive. Now we're into the slightly more subjective yes. areas. Ambiguous. Yeah. First of all, we have accuracy and precision. When you're trying to hit a spot on the court, the consistency of the contact, does it go where you tell it to go? And the pure strike does. <laughs> yeah, it really does. <laughs> but it's not like these two, you've got no control and it's just hitting and hoping. But it is by a country mile. Yeah. You're the most control that has the most control from really the leaning into your English phrase. I am. <laughs> really? I'm making sure people know that I'm from London. <laughs> yeah, the the pure the pure strike is meant to be a precision racket. It's meant to feel nice. It's meant to be manoeuvrable. Pinpoint accuracy. And it and it does exactly what it's meant to. Do. Strikingly accurate. Yeah, very good. These two aren't, and they don't. It's as simple as that. This is designed yeah. to create great spin. Yeah, you hit it over there and it goes over there. Yeah. This one's designed for power. They're not meant to be that 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 really yeah. ultra level of precision and control. Yeah, so on control and precision and accuracy, it is the pure strike, leaving the way. And I'd say the the arrow probably is slightly. Yes. Yeah, slightly, slightly above, slightly above um, but they're very similar in that aspect. But you probably put that down to the fact that it's a spin racket, and spin rackets are, in theory, easier to control, or be precise mm. with, I should say. 
So, touch and feel. We're talking drop shots, little chipped slice, yeah. um, feedback through your hand on contact. I'm feeling like the racket is part of you. You're at one with your weapon. You really are on it, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Um, pure Strike. Yeah. By Miles. New Pure Strike again. Maybe it's just because it's new. Yeah, and it feels really flexible as well. It is the most flexible. It has got the lowest yeah. RAR of all the rackets. Um, That's and RA. For those who don't know, we call RA RAR. So when it comes to the feel of these rackets, the Pure Strike wins out. Yeah, it's, it, I was just thinking, and just as you said that, it occurred to me. They feel like they should, all of them. But it's what yeah. feels nicest. Is straight. Like, this feels stiff and powerful. Yep. This feels spinny and quick and easy to move, but aren't particularly nice feelings. Whereas this... Yeah, which is, and actually, and that was probably the biggest criticism of the previous Pure Strike VS was that it wasn't very comfortable. No, not at all. So the fact that this one now is the NF2 Tech, uh, which is the layup in the throat, seems to have helped seems to have solved the problem um, that Babolat had in that previous frame. Yeah, it's, I, I said it, didn't I, whilst we were playing, I could feel the flex in the frame a little bit, which is rare, Don't, you know, often you get, you know, rackets say, oh, it's really, really flexible, and you can't really tell. There's yeah. definitely a couple, especially on particularly wide forehands, where you could almost feel the racket trying to flex around the ball. It's interesting that you say that, because that's kind of a characteristic of the Wilson Clash, yeah. which, Within the new Pure Strike range, there is a 100 square inch, 16, 20. softer yeah. one that is essentially going up against the, the Clash. Yeah. So we need to see which one's more, because the Clash is so comfortable. Yeah. So we need to see how that new Pure Strike stacks up. So we'll, we'll get that content to you pronto. Yes, but in terms of comfort, which is essentially what we mean by feel for the purposes of this ranking, yeah. The pure strike. Pure strike. Right. It comes to little touch and feel, drop shots, drop volleys, so, and actually very solid on the volley as well. Yes. Um, yeah. While we're talking about it. Yeah. Um, so, yes, so on touch and feel, pure strike number one, number two, the arrow, yeah. and number three, the pure drive, as expected. Yeah. So, the only thing we haven't touched upon directly is serving. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, serving of most important shot on the game. Um, which one? would you say is gonna give you the most power on serve? So strangely, I think it's the pure strike, but I think that's just because it's the most similar to my racket, suits my playing style, I it instantly could serve with that. Like straight away, pick, picked it up, served straight away, felt like I've been serving yeah, for years. I agree when it comes to coming, but in terms, of, in terms of power on the serve, the pure drive for me really had like that bang explosion at the top. Yep. Um, to be expected. I mean, it came to this sort of like kick serve, slice serves. They were all, it wasn't that, yeah. it wasn't that dissimilar. No, again, I think it's, you know, without sounding too full of ourselves, we're quite good at serving. We're quite good at swapping rackets. We're kind of used to it. it. They all felt easy to serve with, really. Like there wasn't anyone that stood out as particularly yeah. easy or difficult. But again, it kind of made, they're all balanced fairly similarly. Yeah. It's not like one's particularly handle heavy or head heavy, which I feel, makes more difference on a serve than anything else. Before we get into our final ranking, I think the important thing to note here is that they are designed to be different for different players who want a different, um, different attributes from their racket. Yeah. They have a different propensity towards certain yeah. shots and ways of playing the game. Yeah. And they all match what they're supposed to do. Yes. Certainly. And I think the other thing, what you can do with Babolat is you can look at the pros who've traditionally used their rackets as well. And if you think um, Fabio Fanini, I'm going to show... I was going to say Roddick, but, but yeah. <laughs> but that, speak like that short, punchy backhand that he's got, yeah, makes perfect sense. And then you look at Dominic Team uses the pure strike, obviously his huge... Heather Watson. <laughs> his huge, long backhand swing kind of makes sense. And then obviously you've got... Alcaraz using the 98. Rafa. I'm more of a traditionalist, as you can see yeah. from my player references. Yeah, but so they, they kind of do exactly what they're meant to, the, the bad yeah. rackets. They really are exactly for who they're for. But when it comes down to it, which one was best? So, in conclusion, the best Babolat tour level racket is the brand new Pure Strike 97. Maybe it's because of the NF2 tech, maybe because it was such a pleasing, beautiful, comfortable racket to use that really felt like it would work for a lot of different players. Yeah, I think it is the feel 
the difference in feel that that, that yeah. makes it stand out across these two. Yeah. I mean, the Aero 98 is a very, very good racket. I, and the Pure Drive is a good racket. All of them are good rackets. But yeah. if I could only have one, I'd be on the Pure Strike all day long. I wouldn't. No, and why is that? If I had to use one, I would use the Aero 98. Okay. Because I would feel underpowered and I couldn't cope. Um, I need it. <laughs> ah, I need it. Yeah. So I That's would. Very in so, with your character. So I would go Aero ninety eight. Personally, I think is the better rack is the best racket. But as a, as for me, but which is the best racket? I would say the Pure Strike ninety seven. Thank you very much for watching. We hope it's been helpful. If you do want to demo any of these rackets here in the UK, you can do that uh, direct with us. If you're not in the UK, find somewhere local to you um, and make sure you try these out, especially the new Pure Strike 97. It will surprise you. Yeah, and just a couple of tips on that that we make sure we do every single time. Make sure you've got a fresh grip on the racket, you've got brand new balls, and something we couldn't change but might be helpful is don't do it in sub-zero temperatures. Yeah, and give it a good fair shake. Make sure you use the racket for an extended period. You're not gonna know in five minutes. You know, give it a good week if possible, if you can. But there you go. If you're a good, experienced tennis player, wanting a slightly heavier racket, you like the Babel Out range, these are three rackets you should definitely be play testing um, and deciding which one you prefer the most. Thank you very much for watching. We really appreciate all the subscribers, all the comments. We do joke, but we do enjoy the comments. Um, so keep them coming. Like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. And we'll see you soon for another video. Thank you very much.